Here we are, folks. We've finally arrived at the fundamental homomorphism theorem, and today we are going to prove it. The theorem states this. If F is a homomorphism of G onto H, so H is a homomorphic image of G, and K is the kernel of this homomorphism F, so it's the set of all elements that F maps to the identity, then H is isomorphic to the quotient group of G by the kernel of F. We previously proved this result, that a quotient group of G is a homomorphic image of G. The fundamental homomorphism theorem is actually the converse. This states that a homomorphic image of G is actually isomorphic to a quotient group of G. So once we've proven this, we will have established that quotient groups and homomorphic images are really interchangeable ideas. I'll leave links in the description to relevant lessons in case you need to review anything throughout the proof, we will also be using this result, which we proved previously, again, link in the description. This just states that the images of two elements under a homomorphism will be equal if and only if those two elements come from the same cosets of the kernel of the homomorphism. So you can watch the video on that if you need to. As for this other theorem which I mentioned, the converse of the fundamental homomorphism theorem, it's so quick to prove that I'll just quickly walk you through it now. The homomorphism from G to a quotient group of G by H is defined as follows. F of X equals the coset HX. We clearly see this is a homomorphism because F of XY, by definition, is HXY. But then, by definition of coset multiplication, that's HX times HY, which again, by definition of this function, is F of X times F of Y. So, clearly, G by H is a homomorphic image of H. Now, with all the results we've proven, the fundamental homomorphism theorem will be very easy to prove. We just need to find an isomorphism between the quotient group of G by the kernel K and this homomorphic image H. So, we'll define this function phi from the quotient group to the homomorphic image defined as follows. Phi of any element Kx from the quotient group is equal to f of x. Remember that f is a homomorphism of G onto H, which is granted to us in the hypothesis of the theorem. And so we're using that in the definition of our function phi. Take any element from the quotient group, those elements have the form kx. Phi of kx is equal to the image of x under this homomorphism f. Now, because cosets have multiple representations, we do need to verify that our function is well-defined. So, we need to verify that if Ka is equal to Kb, then the images of these two elements will be the same under our function phi. But that just follows from this result I mentioned earlier, that f of a will equal f of b if and only if Ka equals Kb. Right? So if we assume that Ka equals Kb, we have these two representations of the same coset, well that means that f of A equals f of B. And f of B, of course, is phi of Kb by definition of our function. So we've shown that if Ka equals Kb, then phi of Ka equals phi of Kb. So indeed our function is well defined. If you take two different representations of the same coset, you will still get the same image under our function. Next, we'll show that phi is bijective, beginning with showing that it is injective. So we'll assume that phi of Ka equals phi of Kb, and we want to show that this implies Ka and Kb are equal. And this is pretty easy if we just use this previously proven result again. If phi of Ka equals phi of Kb, by definition of our function, that means that f of A equals f of B. But again, we've previously proven that that implies Ka equals Kb. The images of two elements under a homomorphism will be equal if and only if they come from the same coset of the kernel. So indeed, if two images of our function are equal, then the inputs must have been equal. The function is injective. Next, we'll show phi is surjective. And this is even easier, because remember, f is a homomorphism of g onto h. f is surjective. So that means every element of h is of the form f of x. Every element of h is mapped to by some x under this homomorphism. 
And clearly, we can get f of x, that element of h, by plugging the coset kx into our function phi. That's very evident just by definition of our function. So for any element f of x of the homomorphic image h, clearly, we can plug the coset kx into our function phi to get f of x. So indeed, it is surjective. Thus, phi is a bijection. So we've shown phi is a bijection between the quotient group of g by the kernel K and the homomorphic image H. All that remains to be shown is that it preserves the group operation. Then we will have proven that it is an isomorphism. So consider phi of Ka times phi of Kb. The rest is fairly straightforward. By definition of phi, this is equal to f of A times f of B. Remember, f is a homomorphism, so that's equal to f of a b. But by definition of phi, that equals phi of k a b. And finally, by definition of coset multiplication, that's equal to phi of k a times k b. And that completes the proof of the fundamental homomorphism theorem. Thus, when we construct quotient groups of a group G, not only are we constructing homomorphic images of G, but as we know now, we are constructing all of the homomorphic images of G, or at least groups that are isomorphic to them. More specifically, if f is a homomorphism from G onto H, then H is isomorphic to the quotient group of G by the kernel of f, written like that in symbols. This is also some handy notation we can use that's relevant to some of this stuff. This means that f is a homomorphism from G onto h. This is like a double arrow. And then this added notation, we've got a little k underneath the double arrow, that means that k is the kernel of this homomorphism. So this means that f is a homomorphism from G onto h with a kernel K. With this compact notation, we can restate the fundamental homomorphism theorem like this. If f is a homomorphism from G onto H with kernel K, then H is isomorphic to the quotient group of G by K. Next time, we'll see some examples of the fundamental homomorphism theorem in action. Link in the description. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and if you find these abstract algebra videos helpful, please consider supporting Wrath of Math on Patreon. Link in the description. It's a huge help. Thanks for watching. Ta -da.